It is wonderful to be with you, with all of you this evening as we celebrate 175 years of missionary experience in the diocesan and diocesan life. We gather to thank God for his calling and for being generous to us by providing everything we need for our ministry to flourish. 175 years ago, 12 lay members from six churches, along with nine clergy, including, including the bishop, gathered in Madagorda to celebrate the first council. Can you imagine? <laughs> Within their deliberations, they decided on very important matters. matters. But what excites me the most is that this small group of people has multiplied and produced fruit a hundredfold and more. Following the missionary spirit that identifies this diocese, at the council, at this council, we bring together in Waco with 480 lay leaders, 270, 268 priests, four bishops, 46 staff members, and 48, 48 volunteers. There are 161 churches, nine campus missions, two schools, and seven institutions. When I see all this growth, the only thing I can do is to thank God for being so generous to us by providing everything we need for our ministry to flourish. I am inspired because I can see how God illuminates our missionary path as we face different challenges and changes. And I am encouraged by feeling the presence of the Holy Spirit manifesting among us, multiplying our resources to reach more people, representatives of many cultures and nationalities. This experience has been a true epiphany for our church, the manifestation of the light of Christ that illuminates the, this diocese, this nation, and all nations. As the Canticle of Simeon says, a light to enlighten the nations. A light to enlighten the nations and we are the light of this, of the world. One of my first trips outside Guatemala, my country of origin, was to the Dominican Republic. And during my trip, the country used a slogan that said, the Dominican Republic, where it all began. This slogan was based on the story of the discovery of the American continent and the encounter between the cultures that happened when Christopher Columbus arrived in the year 1492. The Dominicans claim that the explorers remain, remains are there. However, the Spanish argue the opposite. In the year 1992, during the celebration of the 500 years of the encounter between these two cultures, the Columbus Lighthouse was inaugurated. The Columbus Lighthouse is a cross-shaped monument made of reinforced concrete. Its dimensions, its dimensions are 680 feet by 195 feet. It's a huge building, seven-story building. There are 157 beams of light that emanate towards the sky from the structure and a rotating beam which can be seen from space. When the beams are on, it projects a cross-shaped light into the night sky. This light can be seen and admired approximately 64 miles away. 
kind of like the bad signal. <laughs> you can see it there. Every time the light of the lighthouse is lit, everyone who sees it can remember the life of the discoverer, his spirit of adventure, and the event that mark the encounter of many cultures. During the time of Epiphany, we can make the, the Dominican slogan ours, where it all began. The, bir the birth of Jesus and, ma and his manifestation marked the beginning of a new era for the whole world. The revelation of God's generous love through his son Jesus demonstrates for all humankind the message of the good news. Indeed, Jesus is the light and conquers darkness. It is a sign of unity for the whole world and many cultures. The Epiphany reminds us that Jesus reveals himself to the wise and to the humble, and not just to people who look, who look like us, but also to representatives of other civilizations and the pagan world who identify him as the Messiah, the savior of the world. In the season of Epiphany, we celebrate the journey of the three kings. The arrival of the savior was announced in several Old Testament texts. However, this revelation was given to wise men of different cultures, travelers from different parts of the world who following the light that illuminated their path found Jesus. The journey of the sages is an extraordinary spiritual experience. They relied on their desire to meet the new king and were guided by the light that led them during their pilgrimage. It is essential to know that when we seek Jesus, we must open ourselves to the spirit of adventure, the desire to discover something new and also the persistence in reaching new places to find hope and the new life that this king brings to the whole world. God uses different ways to draw our attention, to call us and trace the routes and paths through which we can find him. Sometimes through everyday experiences and other times through compelling experiences. God is always taking the initiative to look for us and to take us to the right path. Jesus has manifested himself to us as the light of the world so that anyone who follows him will not perish but will be led to a safe place. When we find him, we can listen to his voice and we can follow him his call invites us to undertake new experiences, to follow him, and to bear witness to his mighty love. Through his presence in our lives, he invites us to be the light of this world, a world that fights against the forces of darkness. These forces are present in the form of, in the form of injustice, violence, discrimination, inequality, and indifference to the needs and suffering of many people. Like a lighthouse, the church is called to become a source of energy that radiates light and illuminates the path of those who hopefully seek places where they can find peace, love, and reconciliation. One of the visible signs that our ancestors in the faith used to testify to their encounter with God was the construction of altars. Jacob constructed an altar in the wilderness to mark the place where he met God. Later, we, construct, we began building not just altars, but temples, sanctuaries, and churches to be signs of hope and places of adoration. Our beautiful places and buildings 
remind us that wherever we worship the Lord, his light must shine and be seen in such a way as to be a lighthouse to enlighten those who seek faith and hope. Here, gathered with the Diocese of Texas, I can see the experience of the Epiphany once more, where God reveals himself to us, representatives of many countries and languages, illuminating our future and preparing us to be an inaccessible source of hope for people for different cultures and languages. Through us, our communities are called to be a lighthouse, showing people the way to the abundant life that Christ offers. I am sure that 175 years ago, the delegates to the First Council could not have imagined how far the light of Christ would project in this diocese. However, their faith, determination, and leadership have guided us to what we are today, a, fruit, a fruitful ministry. During this pilgrimage, our church has faith, faced significant challenges, confronting head on the forces of darkness manifested, manifested through slavery, lynching, discrimination, and many other evils. It has been through the guidance of the Holy Spirit that our church has known how to face them. The courage and tenacity of the leaders of our church have made it possible for us to reach this day, carrying the light of Christ as our banner. At the beginning of my reflection, I remembered Christopher Columbus as an individual, a single man who shaped the world. One man who stands as a monument to the watershed of history. But the Diocese of Texas has our own heroes, individuals through whom the light of the Holy Spirit shone into the world. They may not have grand monuments, but certainly they shaped our state, diocese, and church. The light was, shine, was shining through the Reverend Owens and Goshorn, who died of yellow fever while taking care of their parish, parishioners in the 1860s. The light shines in the darkness. In the 1920s, the Ku Klux Klan was going to hold a rally on Galveston Island. So the Roman Catholic Monsignor, the Jewish rabbi, and the rector of Trinity Galveston blocked the causeway and wouldn't allow the clan to come across. The light was shining through the Reverend Gresham Marmion at Columbus, Texas in 1935. A crowd had gathered to lynch a black man, so Reverend Marmion stood on the hood of his car, yelling the crowd to stop, even when the crowd threatened to lynch him lynching him, too. Through it cost them hundreds of thousands of dollars in donations, St. Stephen's School in Austin became the first racially, racially integrated private school in the South. The light was shining in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. In 1979, at the Episcopal Church of the Epiphany in Southwest Houston, a congregation gathered for the ordination of Betty Mascalet to the priesthood, the first woman from the Diocese of Texas to be presented for ordination. But this was a congregation divided, and through there was a protest in the middle of the service. Bishop Milton Richardson carried on and ordained her anyway. The Reverend Ben Scales was the rector of St. Peter's Pasadena back in the 1960s and 70s. One day, a young mother from the apartment complex across the street came to the church asking for help. The Reverend Scales was so upset that he couldn't communicate with the woman 
that he indicated himself to learn to learning Spanish. He would even listen to Spanish language cassette tapes on his headphones as he played golf on his day off in order to learn. It's a good message for the golfers here. <laughs> of course, that led to the transformation of St. Peter's into San Pedro. Time passes and history repeats itself, projecting the light of Christ even higher it's imperative for us to continue fighting against the evils that distance us from the establishment of the kingdom of God. From Waco, we witness the epiphany of the Lord that once again invites us to discover new paths and open doors to the missionary spirit. Now is the time to embrace the spirit of adventure. Where is God calling us to go next? What is God calling us? God, what is God calling each of our churches to discover? How are we called to explore new forms of worship, of worship and hospitality? Here, gather at the Church of Christ, I can live the experience of the epiphany once more. God reveals himself to us, representative, representatives of many countries and diverse colors and thoughts, illuminating our, illuminating our future and preparing us to be a limitless source of hope for people of different cultures and languages. Through us, our communities are called to be a lighthouse that shows people the way to the abundant life that Christ offers. How will you shine a light in the darkness? God is calling us to be a light to enlighten the nations. Let's put up the bad signal <laughs> so that all may know that the Episcopal Church following in the way of Jesus is a place where they can find sanctuary. Amen. <laughs>